played by ear. By the time he was a teenager, he was playing his favorite songs without any sheet music. Like he could always manage with pretty like respectable grades without even like opening a textbook. Ramsey Shirawi first met Lucas in elementary school, and by high school, they were best friends. I slept at his house more times than I can remember. Like his mom is pretty much like my mom at a certain point. And that's where this one doctor was trying to talk to us about if it had, if he had been stabbed in the heart, if he had him in this, if it had him in that, and I'm like, what are you talking? What are you talking about? And then all of a sudden, this other doctor there, he just broke me interrupted this other doctor and said your son's going to die in five minutes. Hi, Chit Chat Kai members. Welcome back to my channel. Okay, okay, okay. So in one of my last videos I made, I don't know if it's still up because YouTube has taken down a couple of my dancing videos, but in one of those I did mention that I wanted to put out a true crime case before Christmas. So this video is delayed. It's been delayed even longer than that because prior to me actually telling you guys about it I've been wanting to get this case out for months and particularly before Christmas so this video is for entertainment purposes or educational purposes and to spread awareness this information in this video I have gathered on Google the internet and other various places such as I've seen it first on a documentary on Prime but I don't have it on there anymore unless I pay for that particular channel thing and um, they also have a documentary on YouTube for free and they have it on Spotify on the podcast for free so that's from True Crime Beat, Lucas, Strasser Heard's final homecoming or it just might be Lucas's final homecoming so the title does rather say it all homecoming Lucas had just arrived home that very day and he was partying with some friends that night he hadn't even really got to see his parents or anything yet he's been gone a whole year living with his grandfather Bulgaria, South America, Bulgaria, South America, forgive me if I'm saying that wrong. So he was just living there for a whole year at his grandfather's house. He, his dad and his mom, his little sister, they all lived in Calgary, Alberta. So he was going there he did go there for a year he went to an american international school he was learning spanish he was really into crossfit and he was getting really in shape so by the time he returned he was you know turning into a very attractive um fit young man and in calgary alberta the bars do open for the 18 year olds. It starts rather young there. Now where I grew up, when I hit the drinking age, I was in British Columbia and there the drinking age is 19. So which I even would agree with a little more than 18. 18 just seems a little young. Now my oldest brother lives in America and he thinks 21 is the perfect age to start drinking. I think that's a little old, but Maybe it's just from where I'm from. Let me know your thoughts when you think people should start drinking legally. This case is just an example of why maybe it should be put off a couple more years or a year. So Lucas was only 18. He had just spent a whole year learning um, drilling, the drilling kind of mechanical industry because his grandfather was doing that type of work. He was going to school there and everything so this night he returns he 
was actually murdered at a bar. So we're gonna get into that. But first I just wanna talk a little bit about Lucas's background. Lucas Strasser Heard, okay. He was kind of a miracle baby. Now his mom had a couple health issues and they just didn't think she would have children or be able to have children. Now Dale, Lucas's dad, Dale and his mom were high school sweethearts. So in their early 20s, Luke, Lucas was conceived. Lucas was considered a miracle baby. Um, Audrey wasn't, Audrey, Lucas's mom wasn't expected to be able to have children. So Lucas was her only child as well, which is very heartbreaking to have one child and then lose them to such a horrific event on his homecoming night. So anyways, we'll get more into that. So he was a surprise and he was born in Calgary, right? Calgary, Alberta, I'm pretty sure they all lived. So don't quote me on that. I'm not 100% sure he was born in Calgary, but I'm, a, I'm supposing he was born in Calgary, Alberta. And so Dale worked from home, so he was kind of like the Mr. Mom. Audrey, I guess she had a job where she went out a lot of the time. And Lucas had difficulties, you know, since his birth, he had to overcome difficulties. He was born two months premature. He, you know, right after being born, they discovered that he had water on his lungs. So they had, you know, he was doing some kind of a weird breathing coffee kind of noise so um the doctors whisked him away and you know fixed him but he also had jaundice so he had to stay in the incubator for a couple weeks but after that he was quite well and returned or not returned but was able to go home for the first time so like i said dale was like mr mom and he really bonded with his son and like he ex in the documentary very true you can think about what it's like to have a child but you don't really know what it's like until you actually have one so Lucas's first word he was such a bright child young man a bright person an intelligent soul almost he was curious he wanted to learn things his first word was purple he had this little stool that was painted purple so that's how we kind of learn the word purple, and that was his first word. Now, to me, that's impressive. Purple. <laughs> purple. It's cute. So, um, he has a picture of when he was a baby, just kind of looking at this guitar. He looked like he was longing to play it. He looked really interested in music. You know, he was interested in music. One sec, you guys. I'm feeling like naked over here with no jewelry on. It's besides the point, I apologize. So anyways, Lucas had many qualities. At just one years old, however, though, his parents, Audrey, and Dale had um, decided to split up. So uh, Audrey took Lucas for a bit to live in Bulgaria, uh, South America with her dad. So Lucas's grandfather, because he had um, some nice, you know, company. It wasn't drilling at that time, I don't think, but it was like mechanical stuff so yeah <laughs> um so Lucas lived there with his mom for like five years and his grandfather and finally returned now I'm not sure if Dale got to see him in between I'm sure they talked on the phone at least I'm not too sure about the visitation between that time but Lucas returned to Calgary at the age six so he was gone for five years and he, he wanted to play hockey. <laughs> so in South America, there's not like a skating rink like there is in Calgary everywhere. So 
Dale had to teach him like three or four years worth in like three months so he could play with the kids that, you know, join a hockey team. So Dale says at age seven, he started, you know, skating, like getting into hockey. So they would just skate up and down like the center line. Dale would hold his stick and he would hold the stick and they would just, you know, the hockey stick and they would just skate up and down back and forth back and forth back and forth and yeah that's how he learned how to skate his dad was actually so like such a great dad you know because it just sounds like anything lucas was interested in he would like cushion that you know he would harness it he would like do everything he could to encourage lucas's passion so lucas got into the piano as a little kid right he got his first guitar Oh, how old was he? Was he 11 or younger? For some reason, I want to say 11. But, you know, he got his first guitar <laughs> sometime around 11. It could have been younger, you guys. I'm sorry. And he started playing it and stuff. But even before that, he had a little keyboard, a piano. And he learned how to play melodies on that. His dad would help him. And he could play by ear. So he could... Um, learn he taught himself a lot of times he wouldn't really have to look at the sheet music although they did have musical piano sheet music but um he didn't really have to use it i think he did know how to use it though because i know i don't <laughs> um so he was he really liked the song from darnie darko and if I remember what it is, I'll put it on the screen, you guys. If I don't, I don't. But, you know, this lovely piano music, and he could play it by ear, and it's on a video where he's playing it. If I can add some footage of that, I will in my video. And he's just a very beautiful child. When he was nine years old, his half-sister, Julia, was born. And... Little did they know that Lucas would only live another nine years. It's ironic. His little sister was born at nine, and then when she's nine, he passes away. I found that kind of eerie, a little bizarre. I know it probably has nothing to do with anything, but I just, I'm a number person, so forgive me. So, um, I mean, I know that has nothing to do with anything, so, again. I'm just um, talking, talking my thoughts. So, yeah, so that was, at, Dale was full-time parenting Julia, Lucas's younger sister, but Lucas was um, sharing time between his mom's house and his dad's house. His last name, Strazer, heard Strazer is his mom's last name, and Hurd is Dale's last name. So they just join it together with a hyphen. So Lucas Strazer hyphen Hurd, and that was his last name. So quite a long last name. It was cool. It was cool. So, yes, yeah, so Lucas had a lot of his good friends, I guess, were more like in his mom's area. They. His best friend would always spend the night at Lucas's mom's house with Lucas, you know. Lucas's mom became like his second mom at one point. So Lucas did have a really close best friend, but he also had many other good friends. He had a girlfriend at the time of his death as well. Um, so Lucas was well liked and, you know, at his funeral people talked about what a great person he was, how he motivated people, how, what a beautiful spirit soul he was, and yeah, it's heartbreaking, you guys, like, it's still, like, so unreal to me that this happened, when you hear why he was killed, you're gonna be like, this is, like, the most stupidest shit ever, because it is, it's just one of those stupid things where you're like, why, oh my gosh, why, please, no, you know, so, so his homecoming. Okay, we're skipping ahead. Lucas is like 17. His grandfather offers him to 
you know, about five years before Lucas was murdered, his grandfather moved again to South America. Now, you guys, I don't know all the details because it sounds to me like his grandfather lived in South America when he was younger and then they all moved back for a bit and then he moved again when Lucas was probably about 13-ish. So he missed his grandfather terribly and when his granddad offered to pay for him to come stay with him for a year, go to school there, learn CrossFit, learn some of the drilling. Um, industry mechanical tools and stuff like get some experience in that Lucas really wanted to go and jump on that idea Dale was a little bit worried Lucas dad because he was scared that Lucas would maybe meet a girl down there get married you know just not come back so he was worried about that but yes Dale had it marked on his calendar November 22nd 2013 Lucas coming home. They had the tree for Christmas ready. Um, they were waiting for Lucas. So November 23rd would have been the day that Dale, Julia, and Lucas set up their Christmas tree together, decorated it, to spend a lovely day together um, catching up, even though Lucas did talk to them all the time. Like Julia had Facebook at nine years old. So eight nine years old so they would always be constantly talking on Facebook and he would call them they would call each other so it's not like they didn't keep in touch but they still like couldn't wait to see each other and um, yeah they couldn't wait to see each other decorate the tree together get ready for the holidays and obviously Dale missed his son but he's a young man and he um, understood that he wanted to see his friends as well. So the plan was Lucas's mom was working out of town, some camping. I don't know if it was like a camping job, but it was one of those jobs where you literally have to go somewhere else to work, you know. Um, there's a lot of these type of jobs in the Alberta area, British Columbia area. People will go... Um, say you're a medic and there's a bunch of people working on an oil field so you're gonna have to go stay over there for a bit and make sure everyone doesn't hurt themselves you know if someone does hurt themselves you're there as a medic to help them my mom actually did one of those jobs so yes I know all about kind of you know camping jobs but they don't always it's not like what it sounds like camping they usually have like a place for the people to stay sometimes it's really nice sometimes it's really shabby so I think she was doing like something of that sort she was out of town on work and Lucas had a bunch of his friends over at his mom's house first like one of his friends picked him up from the airport they went and got his license, a new phone, and a jacket because it's freezing in Calgary in November. And obviously where he just came from, it wasn't freezing. So they did, you know, those three things with him. They went back to Lucas's mom's house for a bit, you know, chilled. And then they, you know, were getting ready for the night. So the first place they went to was a place where their friend was DJing at. After that, when he was done DJing, they kind of bounced around a couple places. The last place they ended up was Vinyl Nightclub. Everybody was having a great time dancing. Lucas was kind of just roaming around, talking to all his friends. Uh, I'm not sure if his girlfriend was there. She wasn't in the documentary at all, so. The only thing I really know about Lucas's girlfriend is that Julia talked to her after he was murdered and she told Julia how Lucas wanted to really look out for her and, you know, everyone just told Julia how proud Lucas it w was of her and she was very touched by that. She was very touched by that and especially when Lucas's girlfriend at the time 
had said how he wanted to protect her, she really teared up. They all gave these, you know, lovely speeches about Lucas at his funeral. And his little sister really remembered the good times. She didn't write about how depressed she was that he was gone. She wrote about all the good times. And it was lovely. So anyways, so they're at this final nightclub and um, it's like end of the night, last call type of deal. Lucas is outside. He is smoking a cigarette, I believe. He is with a crowd of friends. He probably wasn't like a cigarette smoker, but it's probably just one of those things where you're drinking at a nightclub and it's like, yeah, let's go for a cigarette, you know. They're just outside. He's literally in a freaking white t-shirt. And this other guy you can see in the video while Lucas is outside, he's kind of, he got the wrong jacket. So he's freaking out at the jacket people. And the bouncer kind of kicks him outside. Now this guy is with other people. He's with quite a big group of people. Now you can't tell that at first from the footage. It looks like he's maybe with another guy, maybe two. But Lucas gets gang beat by at least 12 people, maybe 15. Like there was so many. There could have been at least 20 involved by the sounds of it. And by the time this is all said and done, only like four people got charged. So it's a sick sick outcome you know I'm glad they got a couple of the main people who did it but they didn't have a video camera so they couldn't capture everybody so yes there this guy that gets the wrong coat is now outside with Lucas because he got kicked out and he's swearing he's saying all kinds of racial profanities and Lucas just came from a Spanish speaking country he was disgusted by these racial slurs and he literally just said like hey like shut up like don't say that stuff you shouldn't say that stuff to strangers or people kind of thing and this guy just turned to him with rage and was like like what it just he went from the one guy to Lucas, and Lucas wasn't getting spared any kind of lenience. He immediately shoved Lucas quite hard. Lucas was pushed backwards, and then Lucas was then swarm, swarmed by at least like five dudes. They just started like hitting him, beating on him. You know, at this point, he was still up trying to get away. The bouncer goes over there. Lucas breaks free of the group. The bouncer kind of, kind of like takes him back into the nightclub. I don't know if he helped him break free really, but Lucas does break free at that point from the like five dudes or however many there was. So he goes in there, he runs into his one friend who's still in the club. The other dudes are going to get the car at this point. Like, okay, we're just going to drive around the back alley because Lucas is going to he let out the back door now, so they're planning on picking him up back alleyway. The dudes that are in the front, however, can apparently see everything through the window. So they can see that Lucas is being ushered out the back door. So at this point, they are planning to meet him at the back alley. The one guy, Nathan Duvet or whatever his name is, he grabbed like a knife out of his car and um, the guy who couldn't get his coat or whatever. Somebody grabbed a knife out of their car. I think it was him. So they're going out the back door. Lucas is scared and his friends say he was kind of a fearless guy. So this really was worrisome to them. So I believe it was Lucas's friend's name was Bryce. Sorry, dude, if I got your name wrong. But he's like, let's switch t-shirts and they don't end up doing it but he's just trying to comfort lucas and they're just sitting there for a minute probably smoking a cigarette and they're like which way should we go because there's two ways out of this back alley so they just they decide to go out i think the shorter way and unfortunately that's where all the guys were waiting for them 
And when they're leaving, they see Lucas and they're like, there he is, one of the guys shouted, right? So they just swarm him right outside the alleyway. Now Lucas does manage to break free from this attack. Unfortunately, he makes, in my opinion, a wrong move of running back into the alley. He would have been better off running into traffic. But this is into hindsight, you know, this is from what we know now because he goes to the alley, they end up catching up to him, he gets cornered. He's pinned in between a huge dumpster and a concrete wall and they beat him down to the point where he falls to the ground and this guy that is like super good at soccer, he's in one of the pro leagues of like, you know, the younger soccer people who play soccer. Great description, hey? <laughs> he's a really good soccer player, okay? So he was just like kicking the shit out of Lucas's face. Like just kicking as hard as he could, as if he's kicking a soccer ball. Literally all Lucas's teeth got kicked out of his head, okay? The paramedics afterwards picked up all the teeth and gave them to Dale. So Lucas is literally getting stabbed. He got stabbed like three times. Uh, I know one of the stabs were in a, a fatal area. I'm not sure if it was his heart or his lung, so I apologize. But his friend was trying to get in between him and the people who were kicking his face. And they just weren't having it. So there was way more of them. So uh, Lucas, even if he did survive this attack, I doubt he would have. Obviously, he wouldn't have been the same, but he may have also been mentally slower. They really beat his head. They kicked him, they just kicked and kicked and kicked at him, and Lucas was screaming for help, begging them to stop, saying that they were killing him. They had no mercy. They left for like two seconds, and then another group went and swarmed him again one more time, saying that they wanted to get his ID so they can get him again. They were on a revenge killing mission for nothing it's literally like one of those things that happen all the time at a bar between two drunk people like dude says shut up okay you maybe get punched in the face and then that's the end of it right that's a normal drunk fight especially if you're just telling someone to shut up like it shouldn't escalate to the point where this guy is getting gang be killed and Lucas was just sticking up for another person. It's so sad. It's so sad. Like, to think that it wasn't even... He wasn't even sticking up for himself. This guy wasn't even after him at first. And he's just trying to, like... He's worried about other people's feelings. This type of person he was. He wanted to be a doctor. He discovered, you know shortly before his death, his murder. He wanted to be a trauma surgeon, you know, just like the doctor who tried to save his life. Lucas wanted to try to save lives, and he was that smart that he could have gone and done it. He had many brilliant ideas, like we could see from his childhood that he was very gifted and talented, and was into music, and we should all try to encourage kids in what they love to do as far as music, um, artwork, singing, whatever their talent or hearts feel that they enjoy or want to, you know, experience. Like, obviously, I'm talking about good things. I'm talking about, like, musical things. Don't let kids do anything stupid, <laughs> you know. Um, creative things. It's good to help kids be creative, help their imaginations. This all helps Lucas be a bright young man because his dad always, every time Lucas was interested in something, he was just like, okay, how are we gonna make this happen for you, you know? <laughs> so, 
It's not like Lucas's dad was particularly rich or anything, because he wasn't. They struggled very much financially after Lucas's death. They had to pay a lot of money to bury him. And emotionally, Dale just went downhill, you know? So they had another person who had lost a child started a GoFundMe for Dale and his family. So that's um, how he kind of got back on his feet a little bit. But yeah, so... This all happened in like a minute, maybe two. Like it didn't take long for them to do what they did to Lucas. Like they just beat him up. It didn't, this sounds like it took long, you know, the amount of damage they did to Lucas, but it only took a couple of minutes. And the paramedics, the cops, they were at the front of the bar, the front of the building they missed they could have maybe interfered at some point but they were investigate investigating the front so if they did have an opportunity they definitely missed that one hopefully the police have learned that maybe have someone go to the back have someone go to the front at the same time just in case you know there's something going down that should be like a mandatory a mandatory thing um this case really shows me like you don't know you go into a building maybe make sure you're checking the whole perimeter out so anywho uh, this friend is trying to like tell the paramedics where to go he goes out he sees that Lucas is really hurt he goes to the end of the alley and he's telling the ambulance where to come like because many people have called the police like, it wasn't just his friend calling for help while Lucas was getting beat. There was other people who tried to interfere and couldn't do anything. But they were, you know, they called 911 and said, like, you know, he's not even responsive. These people are just beating him. And there's so many guys. I don't know how many. They're, like, 12, 15, you know. So, yeah, the cops did have already they sent an ambulance and everything they knew some guy was beat up really bad they just weren't in the right spot um by the time his friend came back with the car they saw the paramedics they didn't know what was going on they were loading lucas into the ambulance on a stretcher his best friend tried to go with him not the friend who was in the alley watching him get pretty much beat to death lucas was not dead at that point though um, his other friend that's seen the initial fight at the front and then that's when they're like okay we're gonna go get the car Lucas so his best friend was the one who went and got the car his other good friend was still in the vinyl nightclub and he's the one who saw his face and was like oh shit like what happened you know so the dude that went and got the car you know he was shocked he left Lucas got into a little fight but he thought that was like it he comes back, Lucas is like unrecognizable, you know, he's beat to like the guy who was in the alley with him said he couldn't even recognize Lucas, like his face. It's hard for him to remember it, you know, he said his eyes were just oh puffied up and closed, like his head was just like all swollen, like everything was so swollen on Lucas that um even when his dad walks into the hospital room doesn't recognize him or his sister so his best friend tries to tell the like ask the ambulance if he can go with them in the ambulance to the hospital they say no so he doesn't end up going in the ambulance with lucas so lucas gets to the hospital right they rush him into one of their emergency rooms they're working on him they're trying they got him stabilized at one point so Audrey finally gets a hold of Dale. She's been calling and calling him for, you know, since she found out about Lucas, which was probably around 2, 30, 3 in the morning-ish. Right, so Dale gets up around 5-ish, maybe 6, right? He's making, like, 5.30-ish, he's making a coffee. He sees some missed calls from some number he doesn't know. He thinks it's maybe Lucas got too drunk, needed a ride home. He's thinking, I hope Lucas got a ride home. 
So while he's making his coffee, he gets another phone call. He picks it up and it's his it's his ex, it's Lucas's mom, Audrey, and she's like, you need to get to the hospital. Lucas has been stabbed. And he's like, what, what? Just all in shock. He went from being sleepy to shocked and awake instantly. So I don't believe Dale drove. He had to call his, he called his mom to pick him up and give him a ride to the hospital. And Julia also had a friend sleeping over that day so I believe she woke up a little later and Dale was already at the hospital and then in my mind this is what happened I'm just piecing the pieces together because they don't really explain every little detail but in my mind I guess the grandma goes picks up Dale brings him to the hospital goes and gets Julia at some point brings her to the hospital I'm not sure guys so Dale gets there and they he goes to the front desk and he's like my son has been stabbed and the lady just goes white and they lead him to the room and he just like looks at this this guy and he's thinking this is not my son that's his first thought like his neck's all swollen up head's huge everything just doesn't look like Lucas but he goes closer he sees his hands he grabs his hands and it's exactly Lucas's hand he leans over he touches his hair he smells his hair it's the smell of his hair it's the feel of his hair and he knew right then and there that that was Lucas so obviously just a devastating moment he was heartbroken, worried, just shocked, crying, hysteric. He was freaking out, right? So, as he was pulling into the hospital, before he even saw Lucas, Audrey had phoned him again, and she said, they told me that he's stable. So, Dale was saying, okay, good, good, he's stable, right? So, Julia's there at some point. Now, whether she goes there with Dale initially or not, I am not sure. But Julia also goes into the room and does not recognize Lucas. But then, like her dad, she his hands were untouched. It's like the only thing that they could see on him untouched. And so... And she could see his hair was, ex like, his hair smelled like his hair. His eyes were just a tiny bit open, she said, and she could see that they were his. So, at that moment, they're just praying that Lucas survives. They're just, <sighs> In the documentary, it says that Julia and Dale were both holding one of Lucas's hands and they felt a squeeze, like Lucas knew that they were there. And then at some point they see his blood press pressure drop like 40 over 20 or something. So they usher out Dale and Julia maybe even the grandmother if she was in the room, whoever was in there, they get ushered out to a little corner room. It's probably more of a private waiting room for people with, you know, loved ones under trauma, surgeon circumstances. So they're waiting in there and then a doctor comes in and he starts saying like, you know, if Lucas, the doctor comes in and starts explaining to Dale, like, you know, if it hadn't have been the stab wound here, if it hadn't have been this, if it hadn't have been that, and then Dale's like, what are you talking about? And then another doctor comes in and interrupts that other doctor talking to Dale, and he looks straight into Dale's eyes, and he says, your son's going to die in five minutes. So Dale just rushes past the doctor's bolts to Lucas's hospital room and he just kind of like leans in and like grabs him tight and he's yelling in his ear and he's like just hang on Lucas like 
he's begging him to live and hang on a little bit longer so you can say goodbye to your mom. And he's just praying and yelling, freaking out. A nurse comes in and starts turning off the machines. And Dale's like, hey, don't give up on him. Please don't give up on him. He's freaking out at the nurse who's turning off the machines. Julia had to watch this happening as well. She saw them turning off the machines and oh, it's just a heartbreaking. So as Dale's freaking out, yelling at his son to hang in there, a doctor comes in and says, you know, your son has passed away. And Dale doesn't remember much after that except, you know, freaking out. This is a time for families to be getting ready for the holidays. And even if it wasn't that time of year, it's just a brutal, it's brutal you guys like these guys attacked him like a pack of wolves a pack of hungry savage wolves and they weren't gonna stop until they keep him it's like there was one leader wolf and he said okay this guy has offended me and these guys don't even deserve to be called wolves to be honest because I love wolves but just as an example okay the leader he's like of the pack he's like okay we're gonna do this and like all the other assholes just listen. It's like, where is the person with the common sense saying, you guys are fucking killing him, like stop. Like where is that one friend, where? I just see a bunch of idiots, a bunch of assholes, a bunch of murderers. These people are just playing? Like they think this is just a game? This is someone's life. They destroyed a family, someone's life probably would have gone on to help other people because he wanted to be a freaking trauma doctor, trauma surgeon, okay? He was already so gifted, I have no doubt. He would have just had such a beautiful life, okay? These punk asses took away someone's life and someone with so much potential to have a beautiful life. And who doesn't love a lovely person living a lovely life? And that's exactly what Lucas was. And um, it's really heartbreaking. I mean, just how it was for no bloody reason. It wasn't even a drunken car accident. It was a freaking group of dudes beating him to death. One of the most brutal ways. Like, I just feel like this is a crime for like the 1600s. You know, not like, not like the 20, 1900s, you know? <sighs> not the 20th century or the 21st century. Right, we're in the 21st century, right? <laughs> okay. Anyway, this looks like a time. These guys acted like they were from the caveman era with no like like just stupid right like oh you told me to shut up now i beat you to death da, da, da. like fucking i don't see any intelligence in these actions none like they're trying to act like they're mafia gang shit like i just i don't get it you guys this is another case that is just makes no bloody sense I think this is maybe the first case I have done on a young man or a male victim, so I should do more for sure because there's definitely a, a lot of male victims as well who deserve to have their cases covered and talked about and people should know about how Life is precious, okay? And 
it's unfortunate that even sticking up for someone could lead to another person's, you know, someone's death. It could, it could, mm. and to imagine, it's his homecoming. He hasn't even gotten a chance to see his dad or his little sister or his mom. These fuckers don't know that. They just see some guy at a club slash bar and they just want to do him in. Just do him in because he told the guy to shut up. <sighs> so many mental issues with this. Like. Dude, I get it. You don't want to get told to shut up. But why? Why did it have to escalate to the point of murder? Why did it have to escalate to the point of hurting someone? It doesn't. It doesn't. So the main dude who instigated the whole thing, the guy with the jacket gone missing, the guy who got the knife, I think his name is Nathan, Dubay, whatever. They end up, he gets released on bail and he escapes. For a while, nobody knows where he is, but he escapes like Russia. So six years later, they finally get the fucker, charge him, you know, for murder. So the other three guys had already been charged and convicted. I think they might have got another one, so there might be five guys altogether who were charged, but for sure there was four. I'm going to have a picture with their names. I don't care to really talk about them, you know. They all have potential to live better lives. And for the people who got away after taking part in beating that young man to death, shame on you. Shame on all y'all. I hope you feel guilty for the rest of your lives. I hope it creeps up in the middle of the night and haunts your asses. Alright? And when that douchebag did come back, you know, after six years and got convicted in front of Lucas's dad, Dale, he was giving Dale the thumbs up, smiling. Like, bitch, that's his son. You're lucky he didn't knock you out. But that's why Dale never did any um, victim impact statements to these people because these monsters, young adults, because he knew that if they smirked or did anything, he would want to jump over there and beat the shit out of them. And he'd end up going to jail. So he is just like, there's no point in me trying to explain to these people what they've done to me and my family, the people who love Lucas, there's just no point because these people don't care. They don't. So good for him for realizing that it didn't matter any kinds of words he would have said. These people don't care. They only care, they're only crying, you know, when they know that they have to pay for it. It's the typical criminal attitude. Oh, I'm only sorry when I have to pay for it. So, let this be a lesson, everybody. Crime equals time a lot of the time. And, oh, you don't want to be one of those people locked up, do you? So let's just um, follow the laws. <laughs> don't hurt anybody. Don't harm anybody in any kind of way, physically, mentally, sexually. Let's care about each other. Let's try to do right by one another and, you know, make the world a better place like that. Thank you guys so much for watching. Rest in peace to Lucas Strasserherd. He was a beautiful person. And I'm so sorry to his family members, his friends, anyone who loved and cared about him. Because, wow, I could truly see how he was a light in their lives. And, I mean, he was such a sweet kid. Such a sweet kid. I couldn't. He was so nice to his little sister. 
and oh, it, it just, it's so heartbreaking. So that's why I wanted to share it. Um, there's so many more I want to share. I'm so glad I'm able to get this one out today. Um, lots of love from me to you. Uh, peace, take care. And um, stay safe out there. Bye, guys. Maybe just stay out of it. If, you know, I know there are a lot of times we want to help. And then we feel guilty a lot of times for not helping. But unless you know that you can walk out of that situation, unless you know all the dynamics to the situation and how dangerous it could possibly be, you know, just always be aware that things can escalate, okay? If you don't want to be harmed, maybe stay out of a situation or get help. Call the cops. You know, get help before you just throw yourself into a situation where you can possibly be harmed, okay? Thank you guys so much. And if you are one of those people getting abused sexually, mentally, physically, emotionally, please reach out to someone, a teacher, um, a doctor, and sometimes people won't believe you at first. You might have to it's sad to say, but you might have to tell a couple of people before you actually get help. Thanks again, you guys. Okay, leave me any comments um, for any case requests in the comments below. Let me know if I got anything wrong in this video in the comments below. Anything you want to correct me on. Let's just all try to be respectful, kind to one another in the comments everywhere. And I do also love to make a fool of myself and dance on my channel so if you're interested in true crime um amazon unboxing me dancing sometimes the odd story time like come and join come and join my channel i'm planning on doing a lot more true crime cases as well i know it's hard to keep people to follow me because i have kind of a broad range of content but bear with me please Okay, I just, I don't want to be just one. I have many aspects <laughs> to myself that I want to share. Expressing myself and yeah, so dancing's good for you. Body and soul, remember that, okay? When you want to hate on someone for dancing hot. All right, love you. Bye, have a good day. And yeah, I totally lost topic track and everything else like usual I'm just so happy I finally did this case and it's probably good I waited a long time because I would have just cried the whole way through I actually sounded pretty good I think I mean I know a couple times that I did almost cry I don't know if you could tell but yeah bye guys and I don't mean any disrespect to anybody so I do um apologize if I hurt anyone's feelings in this video. Okay, bye.